Hello, my fellow YouTubers. Let's work on a little experiment to see if we can find some motion going on in this perpetual motion holder. Now, if you notice on this one here, there's no coils. Um, I figured out a way to attach the bar just by wrapping the bar with about six turns of a carb jumper cable. Touch both ends to 12 volts. She'll stick. Try it out. Be careful with the battery. So, got a pretty strong magnet up here. Um, I think the next one I'll do is with a weaker, I'll just use a little sewing needle and make a magnet out of it. So we can watch it turn. Um, but right now with this neodymium, I'm not touching it. We're just we're looking for motion. So I'll obviously got some motion. So it's something moving in the metal that's causing that thing to move like it's moving. So there's another section of the, another pamphlet that I found, a bit, and he talks about um, uh, gravity. <laughs> so um, yeah, it talks about gravity. So we're going to get into some of that. So let's go ahead and take this PMH off. This thing's been stuck on for a while. So uh, something else I just noticed that I was when I was working on making this little wire. Now these magnets, you know, they don't have the cement in them, so I can't get the revolution speed up. You know what I mean? The good RPM. So I only can go so far, but I want you to watch the reaction of this neodymium to the vortex that's created by turning this wheel. And what I want you to focus on is watch the magnet as it spins and it'll spin to where like it's the halfway point. And I believe at some point this magnetic flux that's flying around the wheel gets caught up into the metal that's sitting above it and then it gets caught up into a direction of the metal so the the clover part of the top metal ring here curves it and starts to get it to turn within itself to i believe to get the magnetic flux here to be like a vortex like a cone to where it's fine-tuning all the vortexes and they're getting tighter because I want you to see this but I can't go fast with this but I I believe that if it went fast enough it would um, be able to turn the magnet all the way around Yep. So I guess the, I didn't even notice it, but the wire got attached to it, huh? We're in that magnetic flux. So you can see it turning, and it wants to keep just ripping over. But there's there's a thing that's keeping it from turning over. Alrighty, let's start at, should 
me start where we left off on the last video because I didn't really finish out. Um, didn't finish out that whole electron thing that Ed was getting into because it gets into gamma rays. He talks about. <clears throat> different things that start to bring together what people talk about. So um, let's start off here because I believe this is where I end it. <clears throat> he says, uh, if the inventor of electrons had a vacuum tube in which his electrons could run close to the top of the vacuum, again that sucks close to the top of the vacuum tube from the west side of the cathode to the east side of the anode and then would hang a vertically hanging magnet that is made from a three inch long hard steel fission wire and then hang one magnet pole at one time right on top in the in the middle of the stream of electrons. I wanted to go past that one. I didn't want to get into that crap. Um, okay, we're going to have to bring it on down here. So if electricity is made with north and south pole magnets and the electricity motor is turned around, if the electric motor is turned around on its axis, by the north and south pole magnets, as is the fact that this will bring up the question, where then are the Thomson electrons? Did I read that right? I'm kind of going nuts. They are not around the electric motor. The plain answer is they're non-existent. Rays. When I reduce the material from which comes out of alpha, beta, and gamma rays, so small when it is magnified 100 times and appearing the same size as an average salt crystal, then there is no more rays, but has flashes, the, su the same as when a connected wire and is tapped on the battery terminal, but without the red sparks. Depending on the size, sometimes I have to wait five minutes before I can see a flash. I think the flashes are caused by north and south pole magnets, which are hitting and breaking the atom's orbit while the magnets are circulating in and around the Earth. In the northern hemisphere, the northern pole magnets are coming down, and the south pole magnets are going up. Whatever each kind of magnets are running in their way, they are hitting their own kind of magnets and are pushing them in the same direction. All right. When I break the orbit of the perpetual motion holder, this guy right here, which I made, I get a flash of light from it. But that flash of light is made by the north and south pole magnets, and so I think the atom is built up by north and south pole magnets. And when the orbit is broken, there is a flash is made the magnets are liberated to go somewhere else. The natural path to North Pole magnets is in the Northern Hemisphere is to go down. So we're in the Northern Hemisphere from Florida up. So right now the Northern, the northern magnets are going down. They're coming down everywhere. So I'm, I'm thinking about the pipe now. So you got a negative, you got a positive, 
come out of the North Pole, you got positive, but now it's heading down. So it's positive and heading down. So you're getting, the pipe is, because it's attractive, so the energy is going down the pipe to the ground. So that's the natural path. Just want to put that out there because when we start getting into siphoning and tuning to the resonant frequency of the planet, that pipe, the fact that it has it's already spring loaded, we'll call it, that it's already got an attractive force of of energy coming down from the North Pole. Okay, bam. So we're gonna move on a little bit, and we're gonna get the cosmic force if I have enough battery and enough stuff. So we got the natural path. So the South Pole magnets to go up. I think it would be a good idea if Get my thing back there. That was distracting too. If physicists while testing radium on the photographic film or alpha rays would put the radium on top of the film and for beta rays and radium under the film and then watch the results or go to the southern hemisphere and experiment i get to whatever on there um let's see what he continues anything here magnets or neutral particles each uh, so we can go here so we have north and south pole magnets positive and negative electricity protons and electrons positrons and mesonons and alpha beta and gamma rays now, why such a confusion? Ain't that the damn truth? Does, why, why would such damn confusion? Does nature really need so many things in the perpetual transformation of things? I love the way he speaks. And on building up the matter and again taking it into parts, I think all that nature needs is three things the north and south pole magnets and the neutral particles each kind of of those three things can act differently with different speed and different combination and so they can accomplish different results i believe that the prospective physicist first should learn what magnets and electricity are, then they will have a sound base for their experiments on their calculations. Oh my God, is that so damn true? I mean, just, do we need everything? We gotta, we gotta have everything labeled. We make everything so complicated. Let's get into this cosmic force because we get into uh, levitation. Well. Not levitation. We get into gravitation. <laughs> Gravity. All right. So Ed talks about that. All right. Here we go. Cosmic force. This is out of um, Ed Lee Scallon's Rock Gate, Homestead, Florida, USA. This is an article that he put in the newspaper. And he put it in the uh, advertisement print of Miami Daily News, Miami, Florida. All right. Let's go back in the cosmic force. Here is additional information on those who read my advertisement in the Miami Daily News, February 3rd, 1946. All right, so we actually got a date to know where the hell Ed was. Ed, Ed was not young in 1946. The North and South Pole individual magnets are the cosmic force. They are the building blocks for, uh, of nature, perpetual transformation of matter. And they are so small that they can pass through everything. They pass through the earth from pole to pole and around the earth. If the north and south pole individual magnets could not pass through the vacuum tube, the same as the Thompson electrons cannot. They, then they could not be the building blocks. The Thompson electrons are very small parts of 